So many of you may look at this and go, what a waste of 2,000 platinum. No one needs six secondary arcanes. The more experienced traders may look at this and think, yeah, buy them low and sell when the prices increase, like in a couple of months, then make big profit. Except secondary encumber prices have dropped recently and show no signs of increasing. Lastly, a very small handful of you with a sharp instinct for prices and some quick maths might think, yeah, this makes sense. 1830 platinum for six encumbers is 305 plat for an encumber, and encumbers are going for an average of 340 plats, and selling all six of those actually ends up being 210 free platinum at the cost of seven trades. And you'd be correct, but relying on your market gut to spot and act on these opportunities is unreliable at best and slow at worst. So that's why I made a program do it for me, and here's how you can make my program do it for you too. To understand how we ended up here, we'll need to real quickly go through some of the economics of Warframe. The prices of in-game items are determined solely by the supply and demand of each item. Operation Orphix comes around, Arcane Energy Supply goes way up, prices go way down. Latron Incarnate gets released, demand for Latron Primes go way up, prices go way up. This forms the basis for a free market economy, and there are actually many parallels we can draw between this and the stock market. Warframe.market acts as what's called the brokerage platform, where individuals can list prices they want to buy specific items at, or put their items up to be sold at prices they set. Of these listings, there are only two we really care about at any given time for any item. And that's the cheapest a person is willing to sell their item for, called the ask, and the most expensive someone is willing to pay for an item, called a bid. And the price gap between the two is called the spread. There are many strategies people use to try to get rich in the stock market, such as going diamond hands on GameStop, or investing in companies that they believe will be successful in the future. For people looking to make profits in the short term, there are day traders who try to capitalize on those spreads and short-term movements. Day trading is basically gambling, with up to 97% of day traders losing money in the long term. When you make a program do the day trading for you, however, thousands of times a day, it's called high-frequency trading, and it's basically magic. Now in Warframe, we're basically restricted to investing and day trading, since any more complicated strategies involve things they don't allow us to do with platinum or items in game. Of these two strategies, investing in Warframe is one, slow, and two, requires a large initial investment of platinum before you can see any return. So with that in mind, we're gonna be day trading, boy. Now, the reason this will work well in game and does not work in real life is because in game, the vast majority of people look at an item and go, yeah, this 150 plat is gonna treat me so well in pumping my damage and not yeah, this 150 plat, this allows me to post a bid on a prime pressure point, which has a spread of 59, so once someone contacts me for this, I'll be down two trades and up 59 plat. So that brings us to the next question. How do we determine what items are worth buying? Let's situate ourselves in a hypothetical. There are three items we can put bids on. These are one, Arcane Reaper, which currently has a bidding price of 450 and an asking price of 600. Two, Arcane Grace, which currently has a bidding price of 580 and an asking price of 630. And three, a Lex Prime set, which has a bidding price of four and an asking price of 10. What do you place a bid on? If you thought Lex Prime set, since you'd be spending five plat to sell it for nine or 10 later, doubling the amount of plat you have, you're forgetting to consider the limited number of trades you have in a day. You're really minus two trades for plus five plat, and the daily trade limit is going to become your biggest enemy, so we need to be dealing with a high absolute value spreads. Then, intuitively, Arcane Reaper is the obvious choice. With a spread of 150, there's a load of plat to be made, right? Well, wrong again, since there's at least one last critical property of each item to consider called liquidity. Liquidity is a term that can describe how easy it is to go from your asset back to your original currency. If you look at how often trades are closed on Arcane Reapers, it's only about three to five times a day, and what we absolutely do not want is to be waiting seven hours for someone to come down to our price of 450 to sell it to us, and then wait another eight hours for a prospective buyer to come up to our asking price of 600 and buy it from us. And that 450 plat is unusable while the item's sitting in our inventory. Arcane Grace, although it has a lower spread, is a much more liquid item, meaning people will sell it to us much more quickly, as well as buy off of us much more quickly, making it more valuable item to place a bid on. Unfortunately, this brings us to a conundrum. We value both high spreads and high liquidity, but these are typically inversely correlated, and intuitively they almost have to be. 
a highly liquid item will have, almost by definition, a lot more people willing to settle on a more in-the-middle price on the item, narrowing its spread. There are a bunch of other factors that also matter, including volatility and price trends, which are important, but the naive approach that I'll be taking is to give my program a threshold for spread, quantified by the difference in the lowest and highest closed prices on an item in the past week, and a threshold for liquidity, which will be quantified by the number of trades closed on that item in the past week. So the reason this is almost impossible to do well manually, but perfect for a program, is because you need to have bids on a wide variety of items, since the best way to increase your trade frequency is to make your name appear at the top of the most lists you can. Additionally, you need to be hugging the price of the person under you as closely as possible, since we're dealing with margins of usually 20 to 30 potential profit per transaction, so every plat really counts. So some quick searching through their API documentation, and done. My account is automatically populated with a lot of bids, an insanely inhuman number of bids that will all be constantly updated to be the best value for any prospective sellers, so long as it's still profitable. Next, once I buy an item, I have to have the program look at all the items I want to track and put up asks on those items for a value higher than what I bought it at, and manually typing things into the CSV file is no longer cutting it. So, a quick week of neglecting society to learn TypeScript, SQLite, and CSS, and I have a front end and a back end. Now, after I punch in an item, once it circles around back to the item, it'll automatically put up an ask, and I added some smart code to have it only post asks higher than what I bought it on for it to be resistant to fake listings driving the prices down. This introduces a new problem of, what if the price of an item is genuinely dropping for some reason? And that's combated in two ways. First, I don't put bids on items that have downward trending prices, since buying when an item is getting cheaper is a bad idea. Second, I'm going to have my program send myself a text whenever the asking price drops below whatever price I bought the item at. So, the program is basically working as desired now, with it turning what would be an impossibly high amount of manually labor of fiddling with listings 20 times a minute for plat perfect precision into just AFKing in my dojo and waiting for people to whisper me in game. The last part, and more of a convenience element than anything, would be, since I already have it texting my phone, wouldn't it be great if it also texted me whenever someone whispered me in game so I don't have to babysit my account while I wait for DMs? And yeah, that would be great. So I did it. By consistently formatting my chat box so that it's big and wide, I can find the position that the whisper names appear relative to the minimize icon by screenshotting the game using OpenCV2 to locate this icon on screen, then find the whole whisper bar which I pass into a program that performs optical character recognition, or OCR, so that it can automatically detect names on the screen. Then using an app called Pushbullet, upon seeing the text, my phone buzzes, saying I have a trade. This has been very efficient and is a lifesaver in ease of use, letting me be anywhere in the household as long as I have my phone with me and able to catch trades within two seconds of a trade appearing. The number of false notifications on this has been in the single digits over the past two weeks and hundreds of trades, so I'm pretty happy with it. Now, you may be curious about how effective this program really is and if it's that much better than trading manually. So here's the quick rundown. The total amount of platinum profit I've made as of recording has been 4,033. Your mileage may vary with this, as it depends on a couple of things, including a bunch of parameters set within the program that I messed with over the last two weeks, as well as your master rank, which limits your number of trades. I spent 23,572,000 credits on trade tax and gotten quite decent at profit taker as a result. I traded on a total of 65 unique items out of the few thousand currently tradable items in game. The items I've sold the most of have been 1. Volt Augmented with 15 closed bids than asks and an average of 15.8 plat profit per item for a total of 237 plat. 2. Secondary Encumbers with 8 closed bids than asks, an average of 36 plat profit per item and a total of 289 plat gained. And three is a three-way tie for Adaptation, Transient Fortitude, and Arcane Guardian, all with five closed bids then asks. The items I've made the most profit off of per item on average have been Primed Charge Shell with one bid then ask and a profit of 51 plat, Primed Flow with one bid then ask and a profit of 46 plat, and Primed Firestorm with one bid then ask and a profit of 43 plat. 
If you enjoyed this video or found it interesting, a uh, like or subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it's my first time doing something like this and uh, that would help me decide if I want to do more of it. The program is free and entirely open source and it's on a GitHub page linked in my Discord which you can find in the description below. The reason I'm not posting the GitHub link directly is mostly because I want to see how many people are interested enough to download it and it provides a platform for you to ask me any questions you might have about the game. I guess the biggest question is always, will I get banned for using this program? And the answer is, as always, to use it at your own risk. However, I can say that the moderators and developer of Warframe.Market have allowed me to publicly post this program, which is good since the majority of this program works through their API. I can then confidently say that it's unlikely you'll get banned from Warframe.Market unless you lower the built-in delays and become a problem for their servers. The only part of the program that even has the tiniest potential of putting you at risk with Warframe is the OCR to detect whispers. However, apps like Warframe Info also use OCR to scan their game and detect item types on the screen and do things on Warframe.Market based on that. And I haven't heard of anyone being banned for using that app, so I have no reason to believe mine would be any more egregious. I want to make it very clear that this program does not play Warframe or control anything in-game for you in any way. It simply analyzes current trends on Warframe.Market, the website, and takes screenshots of the game that are used to see text on screen. I guess if I was watching this video, the biggest question I would have is, do I need a lot of plat to start out since this requires buying items? And maybe surprisingly, the answer is no. My program has configurable settings to limit the price of the items you put bids on, and while higher prices may sometimes correlate with higher spreads, this isn't always the case. I found it interesting that I made a few hundred plat through relatively cheap weapons or singular Warframe parts that I would buy for 20 plat and sell for 60. So even if you're MR10 and only have a couple hundred in the bank, this can work for you. I'm not really expecting this to reach too many people, but if it does, I personally believe this program provides better deals for everyone involved. Programs like these add liquidity to a wide range of items and provide good deals for everyone involved in each trade. The people contacting me had better deals than if I weren't there, and I'm hoping I've helped them avoid some AFK listings in the process. I genuinely just believe it's more rewarding to share something cool than to be using it myself forever. I'm sure I could have milked it for another few months and made tens of thousands of platinum since there's no reason for this to get any less efficient with time if I kept it under wraps. However, I found more enjoyment making this video and programming than I did running Profit Taker a hundred times while waiting on trade. Thanks for watching. I hope it was interesting to at least some of you and uh, maybe inspires you to go do your own cool programs or add to this one if you feel like. If you have anything at all you want to say, I'd highly encourage leaving a comment since I'll be reading all of them and responding to as many as I can if I get a lot. Thanks.